Yes, guys, I'm Sai. Welcome to Ace Podcast Nation. And uh, this is the My Story series. Uh, delighted to be back in the Premier Inn. Big shout to them for uh, hosting me, as always. And uh, very, very excited to say that I'm joined by filmmaker, uh, promotion, uh, was it promoter <laughs> now? Isn't it? Yeah, Peter, well? Peter Spring fell on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, TV host, you know, radio host, bit of, uh, bit of everything. But uh, most importantly, mate, I think, nice guy. That's very nice. Johnny Owen. Thank you, sir. Very, very kind of you. Very nice to be here. Yeah, no, I'm uh, very happy that we were able to fit it in because you've been a busy boy over the last, uh, well, like you're always busy, but like the last week in particular, you were saying like you've been living in hotels I have, yeah. the last week or so. Back in my um, my native country, Wales, different hotel hotel hopping. Mm-hmm. But yeah, doing a doing a pod, podcast series on the miners' strikes, 40th mm-hmm. anniversary. I'm obviously a Merthyr boy, so I remember that very well. Um, doing a lot of stuff for Wales because we've got these two. We had these two massive games for the qualification for the Euros. The second big one is tomorrow night and Day Fever as well, which is like an event me and my wife and some friends put on across the country now. And we did one in um, Merthyr Tidville, the first Welsh one on the weekend, which was brilliant. So yeah, been a busy few days, but very good and very rewarding. So yeah, this is like obviously you want to talk about a few of those things uh, in particular. Well, I tell you what, let's let's catch up a little bit. So yeah, we haven't had you on for a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, in that time, you got married. It's coming up to nearly a year now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, so something right, still married. So yeah, still married. That's <laughs> it. That's the main thing, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But um, I mean, I'm assuming that was a lovely day and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it was great. Obviously, my wife has got a sort of high profile now. Vicky mm-hmm. McClure, she does a thing called um, Line of Duty that really sent the sort of stratospheric. So, but it was great. We had a lot of family, a lot of friends. Did it in Nottingham. Didn't really tell anybody. Yeah. Didn't, didn't tell the press or anything. I didn't, certainly didn't sell any exclusives mm-hmm. or any of that kind of thing. Try to make it as sort of private as possible. But it was a good good day, you know, and um, we had a big party. And, um, yeah, you know, it was um, it was a lovely, lovely thing to be able to do for everybody. Yeah. Is it difficult then? Like, because obviously Vicky is high profile. You're well known with stuff like that where you, you know, you want to have like a, a family wedding and you, know, you don't want necessarily the press and stuff. But is it difficult? to kind of get that done without it sort of slipping out and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we obviously said to people who came, look, you know, we're not going to tell the press, but, you know, they find out by the end of the night and then they, they're, they're outside. That's fine, you know, they take some photos mm-hmm. and that's part of the deal, really. I mean, it was quite funny because the last photos of the night, there's some of my great mates from, from back in Merth are sort of stumbling mm-hmm. out with me. Mm-hmm. So they were dead chuffed going to work on the Monday yeah. when they made. So like, is that you? Yeah. They were like, yeah. So it's just, you know, it's part of it all, really. Um, Vicky's very good with it. I tried to be, you know, we, we say to them, look, you know, take your photos. And then, you know, off we go then and try to live our lives as privately as we can. But we don't look for it. We never no. caught it or sort of any of that kind of thing. We don't really go to premiers or, or that kind of stuff which you can do and, and those people that do that that's fine that's not us really but um because of her more than me i'd say definitely you know there's interest in our private lives or sometimes once or twice they've turned up on the street especially during covid and the lockdown they'd be yeah. outside and when we do the clap you know they'd be there and that was all right you know that's just the way they were but um yeah part of it side really and um you know you've just got to try and you know Try and lay down some boundaries. Yeah, yeah. try and lay down some boundaries. Navigate it as best you can, as you said. And um, and like you said, just understand it's all part of it, really. Yeah, and I suppose it's like anything in it. You have the the kind of benefits of being high profile. Yeah, and whatever. you do. And that's part of the yeah. thing which comes. Like you can get a you can get a nice restaurant, and you can get yeah. you know you do get off of those things. So there is a, a good side of it as well. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people don't talk about. There's a great story about Paul McCartney, and he, he goes in at his 68 to France to Nice. And he goes in disguise because he's the height of Beatle Mania, one of the most famous, if not the most famous man in the world. He's got glasses and, and he's got a moustache. And, and he goes out for a night out. He can't get in anywhere. He's kept he's getting refused because nobody knows who he is. Yeah, he and he goes back and he's like, forget that. I want to be a Beatle again. He pulls it <laughs> off and goes back out. <laughs> Paul McCartney, and you come. Yeah. So he said, look, you know what? There are some you know, sides of it that are sometimes, you know, more difficult. But but mostly it's a, it's a positive thing, I'd say. Yeah, I think so. And I, I guess, like, with... A lot of the time, they just sort of want their photos and whatever. Yeah, and, you know, selfies are the big thing, I would say. Yeah. Used to be autographs years ago, selfies now, and people That's just it. go back. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you sign many autographs then these days? Do Not so many autographs. Sometimes you, you get them sort of, um, they want to just sign things. So yeah. the ones of me and Vicky, and people say, like, sometimes, you know, they go and sell them on eBay. That doesn't bother me, really. I mean, sometimes some of the footballers, you know, will say, oh, I'll only want to sign it to somebody so they yeah, can't yeah, sell they it. Can't sell it. Oh, I, 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 I just, uh, whatever they ask, I just do it. I don't, I don't think it's that much of a bigger deal. And 
and then it's like you said, it's mostly selfies. I do laugh because um, a really good mate is Sean Dyche, who's a lovely fella, mm -hmm. and he's brilliant because he's he gets he gets absolutely mobbed. He does. I mean, it's amazing to go up with the Premier League manager. I love watching the room when people clock yeah. him. He's so distinctive looking, Sean as well. But he's so skilled with the phone now that when people get a bit fumbly and nervous, he just goes, "Give me your," <laughs> and every phone he just turns around, <laughs> bang, and off he goes. Yeah, just like a lot <laughs> yeah. Of people yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, he kind of like knows what to do. So I've seen him doing that. But uh, yeah, that does seem to be the modern thing. So si, is, is is a selfie. Uh, do you know, funny enough, when um, we did when I did the event with um, with Michael Chopper, it was the last one we did before Christmas, and then the next the next day he was doing something in um, Cardiff Classic shirts, so went down to say hello and and whatnot, and I, and I said to him, oh, I have, we didn't have a selfie last night, like we had you know like proper photos and film, and yeah, yeah, we didn't actually just take like a casual selfie, so we'll have a selfie before you go up to Newcastle, and then all of a sudden I'm trying to take this picture. And he's all sort of all half already posing, and, I, and I'm like, I can't get to work. What's my code? What's this? And just like fumbling around. Yeah. But, um, so what happens? The pressure. Imagine if that's somebody like you know, like you know, Brad Pitt or something. Yeah. Or, you know, if somebody like really, you be thinking, oh. Well, and that's like, like I spent a couple of days with him, you know, when yeah. doing the events and stuff. But to to them, like, why am I nervous? I'm just quick coded, but it's just yeah. so weird. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. But um, it's you know, just lastly on that, like the press side of things, um. So I've been asked twice for a photo, and by you know I've got no profile whatsoever, and I'm not so on this, on this. Otherwise, but like yeah. it was so odd to me because the first time I got asked was in Subway up by me, <laughs> and it was like two weeks after, maybe maybe a month after I'd started it. So you're talking, I had like maybe a hundred subscribers doing it from my house, wasn't doing it in person and stuff like that, and I could just feel I was in the queue to Subway, I could just feel this person. Glaring, like it felt like they were glaring into the side of my head, and you're like, oh, "What was this now?" And then he said, "Oh, you do that podcast, didn't you?" And I was like, "Yeah." She said, "Can I have a photo?" And I was like, um, "Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah." I was really like taken aback by it, but it was yeah, yeah, very yeah. strange. And then when we went to the, where was it? Oh, it was the boxing. We went up to um, support Kieran Gethin, uh, who's a friend of mine up in um, Abergavenny. He was fighting for the Welsh title. And um, I walked in, and this guy knew me. He said, "Hi, oh, Sai, how are you? Uh, like, how's how's Becky? How's the kids?" I was like, oh. "So you're in my head, you're like, you're you're like scanning. Like, do I know him? Where yeah, do, yeah, do yeah. I know him from football, music? Like, where do I know this person from?" And he just, and then it, after a few questions, I was able to sort of navigate that it was from the podcast, but it was just very surreal for me. So, like, God knows how what it's like for you guys because. But the, but the one I always get, which is, which is great, is like, I get people saying to me, Can you take a selfie with Vicky? And I go, Yes, yeah, so I do the photo. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my job, so you know yeah, I mean? And I always, go, I always go, Yeah, yeah, no problem at all. That genuinely doesn't bother me. No. It's like, it's, it's, if, it, if it can make somebody happy that they've got that, I think that's brilliant. Yeah, 100%. I think, like, it's, um, it's, just, it's just, just a weird thing, isn't it? But, like, to the person, particularly like with Vicky, like if you've got like someone who's maybe like a massive fan of Line of Duty, and yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, and then they see her in the street or you know whatever, like that football probably mean a lot. Well, yeah, people there. are like fanatical about that show, you know. They you know they watch it over and over. And there's websites and sort of podcasts, all sorts of things yeah. dedicated to it. So they really, really sort of like scrutinize it, Alan, yeah. analyze it to the nth degree. So you know when they see her, they're like, oh my, so yeah, she doesn't mind at all because it means a lot to them. Yeah, that's it. So. The other thing you mentioned, obviously, was the miners. Um, yeah, which you're doing. Yeah, uh, BBC Sound, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, that starts next week. Promo is out this week, uh, and it's about the miners' strike because obviously the anniversary was 40 years ago. I'm from the Tidville, which is a very famous sort of mining heavy industry area. My father worked underground. My grandfather, but I wasn't unusual. The vast majority of us from up there. That's our background. So I, I just wanted to sort of talk about, and I was interested because they wanted to do it from a, a Welsh perspective. Most things about the miners' strike tend to be about. Yorkshire knots, you know, mm. like, but sort of sort of seen as the front line, all grieve, all those big sort of what they call set pieces. Um, but interestingly enough, I think uh, Arthur Scargill, the sort of right hand man, Mick McGarhy, a Scottish mining leader, famously said that the strike would be won and lost in South Wales. And he was right, I believe. It was it was down here that right, the strike was the most solid till the end. And, you know, after the strike, we were the most sort of desolated in the sense of like, you know, the industry was wiped out and what happened to the valleys after them. 
obviously a Mercer boy, a proud Mercer boy. But let's talk about what it's like to live there now. What must what's the work situation like? What's the town centre like? All those kind of things. I want to talk about all those kind of things mm. in the in the podcast. Um, and it's been great. You know, I come back to Cardiff. I lived in Cardiff for a long time. And cut my mates from Sheffield were down this weekend for Dave. Even though, wow, what a city that is! Like, you see Cardiff skyline, they're building. I got the big BBC right up to the train station, it's buzzing every night now, Cardiff, which was a big shock to me after coming back. Sort of like 10, 15 years later, every night was I went into town by the Hayes on a Tuesday night full. So Cardiff's sort of like there's a there's a theory that sort of that is doing really well, but what are the valleys like? You know, where are still I think two million Welsh people still live. What's it been like since the pits are gone? So the, the series is all about that. You know, the strike itself, but what's happened since? The aftermath. Yes, it? exactly. Is it quite an emotional show to film, to film at certain points? Yeah, it was. I, I mean, more than I thought, I kind of, I, my father passed away in 2017 and um, he was a big influence on my life. I like my own man. He was great. And um, he was a massive sports fan. You know, I was going to watch Merthyr City, Wales. He was one of those, one of those blokes, you know. And he'd been underground when he did big union man. So I, I realized, you know, the, the, the sort of the effect it had on, on me really growing up. Um, and there were times when I spoke about him and it was things I didn't know. My mother was talking about, she sort of said, like, he came out of the pits after Aberfan. He was there on the day of the disaster. He was part of the rescue thing. And he, he came out. And I never knew that because he never spoke about it. Obviously, they, they didn't. Um, and there was a one really poignant moment where we went back to the part of Merthyr where I'm from, which is called Higerig, which is a pit village. As part of Mursa. My great grandfather worked in the pit there. And um they sing outside the local pub, the Red Lion, every Christmas. And it was lovely. Like, so we went up there to record, and it was all people in the street. It wasn't raining by some miracle. Mm. But everybody was up in the street singing. And I just, you know, I thought, God, you know, I grew up with this, you know. And um, but there's still a community spirit there. There's still people going out <clears throat> singing Christmas carols, kids, people all outside this lovely pub in the valleys all wrapped up and that was a lovely moment as well so you realized you know the spirit is still there in a way yeah it's interesting to me as well with the like you mentioned cardiff and, and the size of it and how busy and the hustle and bustle of it i've lived in cardiff all my whole life and what i've noticed is i've certainly in the probably the last since my kids have been born to so say the last 20 years is that community spirit i feel in cardiff has slowly kind of whittled away mm. so like when i grew up, I knew all my neighbours, we knew all by name, you know, you could go and knock their house and, and you would just walk in and all these, you know, different things, there was yeah. like this community spirit, whereas as we've, as put like more recently, I feel like that has greatly changed, whereby people don't interact with their neighbours as much, they might know the ones next to them directly, whereas all my friends up in the valleys, and the surrounding areas, you know, even in Cofidi, which is pretty close to Cardiff, like it's the same thing. There's that community spirit is very much still alive in the valleys. Mm. Whereas I think in this Cardiff or in the city, I think it's it dissipates a bit yeah. more. Yeah. I, I read a really interesting article actually, so the, the Cardiff accent, the very, very sort of famous accent. You've got a you know a bit of it crop. Yeah, you know, Tuesday, all I hold it going that way and talking. <laughs> They, that's 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 dying out because Cardiff's population has changed. The demographic with lots of with the media, Welsh speaking people from all over Wales came in, you know, took over early, early areas. Not a bad thing. And then people moving in, moving into the area, so that accent is slowly sort of like you know, uh, like the Cockney accent in London, sort of went left, you know, and, and moved out towards Essex. And, that, and it was very interesting. And Cardiff's very similar to Manchester, I think. Manchester they talk with. It kind of becomes like a bit like it sucks everything in. So those are the places around you, like your Boltons, Rochdale's, Barry's, Manchester dominates. Mm. Cardiff's got a bit of that in South Wales now. You know, it's and, it's, and there's so many positive things about that because it's you know it's a cultural centre. Like it's busy. So it's got a media hub. You know, it's a fantastic city, Cardiff. It's a really dynamic, modern European city. You feel, but there's, there is a downside in that all the investment gets sort of pulled in there, uh, and sometimes to the detriment of the of the, of the valleys, certainly in other areas. Um, but it's understandable because, you know, the main line goes to London. I mean, like, London's only an hour and 40 minutes away from Cardiff. It's unbelievable. It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, so, you know, it's 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 just a modern thing, really, that naturally investment and companies, they want, they want to come to Cardiff. Yeah. It's very difficult to get them to go outside, outside you know, yeah. really, and you can understand it. But it does change Cardiff as well then because you've got people from outside Cardiff moving in. Mm. So, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's, it's, it's that's the modern world almost, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I... I think, look, I think the internet and social media probably has contributed to that sort of loss of community spirit in certain places as well. 
Um, and it's something which as a kid I loved, like, you know, yeah. being able to knowing everyone, like where I grew up in Rather, like it wasn't just the street that you knew, you knew everyone and you knew, well, they do this and they do yeah. that. And, you know, when you're a teenager and you're getting into some trouble, it's unfortunate <laughs> because yeah. everyone knows you. Yeah. So you can walk down the street and you'd be in a pain as kids do. And like everyone knew who, like, you know, yeah. there's, there's what is. Who your family were. And they'd yeah, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd give you mum a shout. <laughs> Couldn't get away with anything. anything. I never got away with anything. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I got drunk, I think I was like that. Uh, me and this older boy, had, my parents had gone to like a, you know, like a carpet ride or something like that. To get, gone somewhere on a Saturday afternoon, and he had said to me, he was a couple of years older than me, and said, "Oh, let's have drink your parents' liqueurs." And so, me never drunk a drop of alcohol before, sort of fourteen, fifteen, and then um, drunk a lot of liqueurs and spirits. And was you sick? Oh, I was sick. sick wasn't the word. I was really, oh, really well. It's amazing you drink again after that because I remember... Oh, I didn't for a few years. Yeah, it was the same. I was 13. I had a flag on the side in Kabartha Park. So ill. I was, when I first got drunk, I was like, oh, this is, sorry, mm. so ill. I didn't think I touched a drop for about 18 months, two years. Just mm. the thought, wasn't it? Was like, well, I still ill. don't drink Coke or Pepsi from the New Year 1998. Well, I haven't drunk a drop of cider since then. Man, I can't drink cider. I can't like <laughs> my missus likes like Dr Pepper or like uh, Diet Coke and stuff like that. I can't drink it. Like it makes me think of vodka. <laughs> Scarred for like, life. Yeah, 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 it's crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I like, drank these liqueurs, and he had the bright. Like, he was older than me, and he had the bright idea. Oh yeah, let's go to the park. And I was sick in the park and stuff, which is obviously not a good look or a good thing. And then um, yeah. I was home within about an hour and I was in a load of trouble. But I think I was so ill, they couldn't even tell me off. Like, yeah, because yeah. I yeah, I was just being sick and obviously the strength of it and all that sort of, it was like proper like, like, you know, like the liqueurs that parents like mm. culminate on holidays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the really obscure stuff that stays there. For I could feel your pain made already, like that oh, strong liquor stuff. It was yeah, rough. And it was the first, the first time I'd ever drunk any alcohol as well. So yeah, but all the neighbours knew about it. All the people in Rada, they were like, "Oh, he's yeah. been, he's been drinking, he's been at the <laughs> park and stuff." But it's part of growing up, as well, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, but on sticking with Mirza, mm -hmm. um, you brought day fever um, to to your hometown on uh, on Saturday. Before you tell us about Saturday, like tell us about the idea and, and where it came from and how it came about. Because I know just from putting on these little events with, you know, ex-footballers and stuff, it could be quite stressful putting on events and promoting them and stuff. I don't think you have any issues selling tickets for the looks of it. No, I mean, we've been very lucky with that touch wood. And that's, that is the massive thing, like you said. You're always nervous and nobody's going to turn up, you know, nobody's mm -hmm. going to buy a ticket. Um, but we, I, I've been had an idea for ages about doing sort of daytime events. There's always been daytime events, but they tend to be sort of more specialists, like day raids and mm. soul days, northern soul. I was like, no, no, no. I was like, I'm more like a, just a classic nightclub, you know, with all the, the, the anthems we used to sing along to. So everything from like Town Hall Palace to, yeah, 80s even as well, like, you mm. know, like all that kind of stuff, like Whitney Houston, just stuff you can sing along, kind of wedding music, really, you know. Um, Oops, um sorry. yeah, yeah, exactly that. So I just thought, well, you know what, let's try one in Sheffield. I got some great mates up there, Johnny McClure, who's lead singer of Reverend the Makers, his brother Chris, and a lad called Jimmy O'Hara, really bright lads, actually. And Jimmy ran a big festival in Sheffield called Tramlines that he was co founder of, and then he sold. So they were they knew what they were doing, and I said, well, let's try it. We tried it in Sheffield, a place called the City Hall for Christmas, it sold out really quickly. And we thought, Oof. but then we thought that might have been because it was Christmas. So then we thought, well, let's try in January, which is always the most challenging month, they say. Mm -hmm. But that's so they all sold out as well. And then they, they sort of, it just got this momentum. And then everywhere we went, they went bang, bang. Like Cardiff went in two hours. Bristol went in three hours. Mercer went in an hour. Nottingham went in 14 minutes. So it was like, they were just, there was obviously a demand. And every time we've gone places, people have loved it. You know, it's 75%, 80% women. They're great. Mm -hmm. They have a great time. They yeah. have a few drinks and sing along to all the stuff. And it just seems to so the atmosphere is brilliant in there. One of the doormen said to me in Merthyr, he said, I've never known an event like that. He said, he said, I didn't even get a crossword, mm -hmm. let alone have to throw anybody out. He said it was just, it was surreal. And I just showed you the video, which you, yeah, I, I yeah, give you for, your, for the thing. But 
that was that was about four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and it feels like it's about eleven o'clock in the night. Yeah. But I had a thought, he said. We were talking about it when we used to I'd feel going up in the day. Who decided we had to go up in the night, didn't it? I know. Why not make it the day? Yeah. You know, the best if you if you go back to like your early twenties and stuff when you used to maybe go out on a Sunday and watch yeah. football and stuff like that. All the best nights or the best sessions or whatever you want to call them, drinking with your mates now. We're, we're in the afternoon, in yeah. the daytime. Always. Sundays used to be fantastic. Yeah. We just sort of go to the pub at like oh, so time. We used to call them, used to call them Mikey. A Mikey. Yeah, Mikey Ray are all there. Absolutely, we are. You and your kids. We know this is South Wales scene. There was a very famous Welsh band called Mikey Ray. An all day session was a Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah this is, so we got together and so we, Willie Bowling got us together. Did he? On an all day, yeah, yeah. There you go, on a Mikey. Yeah. So the thing is, is that, you know, we've had a few people we've met there. Um, and we've seen it. a lot of people like saying, you just mentioned social media has changed the world. I, I agree. But this lad got in touch and said, look, I don't know about the apps and things, but I'm of a certain age now. And I asked somebody to dance. And I danced and we got on really well. And we've been seeing each other ever since. That's amazing. And I thought that was really nice, you know, that amazing. people can go to an environment, they recognize and know, enjoy it, and, you know, could end up sort of together. That's, that's what's fascinating, fascinating about that to me, mate, just to completely go off on a bit of a tangent. Sorry. Is I spoke, be speaking to a few people who are about my age, maybe a bit younger, a bit older in some cases, and some of them that like, they're divorced or whatever, and they find they find it incredibly difficult to meet people now, yeah, because everything's like on social media. The pubs are quite quiet, generally speaking, so you're not gonna meet or meet someone like I met my missus at yeah. the pub or something like that because they they're quite quiet, like. and then in the clubs or like. It's just not the environment to get to know someone, is it? Like, yeah. If the music's so loud. Yeah. You can't. But like with that sort of day fever, like the music and everything about it is quite nostalgic, isn't it? Yes. And it almost takes you back to a time where, dare I say, that people approached each other for a conversation Absolutely. and said, can I buy you a drink? And you sat there and you talked to people and had a few drinks and you got to know someone. And then the music comes on and you have a little sing along and a dance and whatever. Do you have a nice slow song at the end of the song? Absolutely. We used to call it, yeah, to call it the valley, it's the smooch. We used to call it the smooch section. They got other other names for it, but yeah. in other parts of the country. We call it the smooch. My mate used to say a funny thing. Alex Edwards, he's a great lad, he used to say, if George Michael was singing Careless Whisper and you weren't dancing with a girl, you may as well go and get a kebab because it was, mm -hmm. it was done. You weren't gonna you weren't gonna pull that night. But it was a thing where you you go across the girl and like George yeah. would be singing there, and you go, hello, do you want yes? And then you'd have a bit of a chat. Yeah. And then you'd say, Would you like me to walk you home? That yeah. was the classic. And then they'd say, Yes or no. And that was kind of how it worked. Yeah. So you kind of knew where you stood, you know, and the lad went yeah. over to the girl. And, and we all kind of knew this this rhythm of, of how to behave, really. And, and I love the idea that it, that it happens again at the yeah. end. You know? And I think that's I mean, that's a really good thing. And funny enough, when I, I saw on the weekend that you had the one on the Saturday, somehow I had missed it going on sale in Murphy. I didn't know yeah, about yeah. it until I saw that sort of afterwards. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Um, but I said to my mate, or this guy, who's was, um, he is a mate. And then um, I said to him, look, next time they do one of them, mm. go. Yeah. And I said, not necessarily to meet a girl or like your next wife. Just, or just to get out and socialize. Just go and socialize and just meet people. And he was like, oh, I don't know. I, don't know. I said, no, I promise you, if you just go there and the music, the nostalgia, everything about it, the atmosphere, It'll just make you feel better. I told we'll do say, right? We've got this, it's on the depot. It's a great new venue. Just other side of the, the train station in Cardiff. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the bay, it's 1,500 capacity, it's sold out. But I got guest lists. So we'll get you mate and the guest. If you want to come down the way, I'll, we'll sort it out. And we'll yeah, have a beautiful afternoon down there. Yeah. Yeah, but if he comes to me, I can't find you. Very good. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. If you leave, I've got no one to keep an eye on my camera. <laughs> You're very good on the camera as well. <laughs> but no, like for me, like I'm trying to, I want to, um, like these these group of guys where we've been speaking, like some of them have really struggled after COVID. Yeah, no, it's tough. Like a few of them yeah. relationships broke down in COVID and stuff like that. And I think, um, like we got group like mm. whatsapp group where we're just talking and stuff and i think um i don't know some weird, of well, my, my, thing, my, my like plan, nostalgia my, and, and yeah my, my my plan say is that they run once a month mm. so it's a day fever every month in cardiff in the depot so people always know it's there 
So you've got something to look forward to, possibility to meet. So there's no pressure to it in the one time we're there. Yeah. You know it's only you could get to meet people. And I just think, like you said, because of we're very good on mental health these days, much better than we were 10 years ago and certainly 20 years ago, which I think is great, you know. Mm. So if I can say, look, you can come to this thing. It's a great atmosphere. It's once a month. It's a chance you could meet people. And whatever happens, you can have a good time. You can have a dance and a sing song. That's just, that's just you know, a given. Yeah. But you could, you know, you could meet people and you can dip in once a month. I think that's the most important thing. I've got, we've got it in 13 cities. The plan is to go up another four more by the autumn. If we're in all those cities and people know us once a month, I'm happy, man. Because I'm thinking it's somewhere that people can go of a certain age, recognize a certain life, world, you know, that idea of the old nightclub, and they can get along and have a good time. I think that's that, that work really that's well. That's amazing, mate. I think. Um, and I, I, like I said, like, you can be home by 10 o'clock as well. Do you know you're home, home, home for match of the day? <laughs> if City got one this year, City will have to make playoffs. We'll be home for match of yeah, the day next year. And that's it. But, you know, like, Back when I used to go to the pub regular, yeah, is if I'd been out all day on a Saturday, and I was in the pub then in the evening, quite often I would leave at like half nine, ten. It's a nice time to leave it. Wander home, maybe get a bit of food. Yeah, that's watch match of the day. Beautiful. And then on Sunday, you had a full night's sleep. You're not getting in two, three yeah. o'clock. You're in. You're in bed by eleven, not just eleven. Still feel like shit. <laughs> <laughs> but not. Yeah, but not quite. You yeah, a few hours kept at least some sleep. <laughs> a few people did say to me. But they went on after, and they were like, Johnny, I mean, like, once, once, I, the got, yeah, once I got the bag, I wanted to stay out. I was like, that's fair. People with more yeah, robust more, constitution yeah, side. Do you know what I mean? They obviously had more practice. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, with that, like, what, what about, like, in, from your point of view, when you're doing them, do you enjoy them as much as the people who are kind of going? Yeah, I do, actually. Or, I mean, I, I can't. stressful of, doing it? Do so, in the events? I'm, I'm, I want to, it's stressful in the sense that I obviously want it to go well. I want, I want, you know, all the music to work all night and all the visuals and people have a good time. That's what I want. So I'm always aware of that. But once I get there, you know, I, I, I love being on the stage. I love playing the music. And my missus laughs at me because she goes, God, you drink a lot, but it just doesn't affect you. But I think that's just adrenaline. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do, you know, I have a few cans and I am wired really because mm. I like, see the crowd enjoying it and, and I want them to have a good time. I think as I do keep doing more and more, I'll sort of settle a little yeah. bit more and think it's actually, you know, you're going to be all right. But the first few, especially, I was really like, oh God, I hope these go okay. And, you know, the main thing for us is I, people to leave and go, I had a really good day. And like the vast, vast majority of all left, you know, we haven't had anything other than people going, I had a great time and I'll be back again. And that's what you want. You just want yeah, people to have a good time. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I think it's such a good idea. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's one of those things. Another thing which you've done, another thing which you've done since <laughs> the last time we spoke, yeah. um, is Boyle Films has become a, a thing. Yeah, yeah. So, me so and Vicky. Yeah, so me and Vicky were obviously, I'd done quite a lot of documentaries. Um and I was very flattered that people were offering me more. Vicky, you know, as we spoke about, has a very high profile, so she gets a lot of offers. So we were sort of talking about let's form our own production company. Mm -hmm. Let's do our stuff through this company as, as best we can. So we formed uh, Build Your Own Films, Be Your Films. And um, after about, we got a commission with HTV called Without Sin, uh, HTV, ITV, show my Welsh mm -hmm. back over there. Now. And... Um, and then another company called All Three Media, a really big sort of company, they, they came in and said, we like what you're doing, we want to buy a percentage of you. Uh, and we thought, okay, that's really flattering. So it's becoming more of a serious thing now. So yeah. we've got two, we've done uh, got something called Paramount, Paramount Plus next month, no, in May, sorry, called Insomnia, big new series, and possibly then um, something with ITV and the BBC. So it's going really well. Um, and we've employed a few people, uh, and I've... Probably, if Wales qualify, mm -hmm. I would probably do another documentary, yeah. I would imagine. So I could do that through the company and things like that. So, yeah, it's um, touch wood, it's, it's, it's gone great. So, with that production company, I'm assuming when for you, yourself, yeah. or for Vicky as well, like if you've got an idea for a documentary or for this, it makes it a bit easier to bring it into fruition. Because you've got your own production company. Exactly so right. Yeah, that's so that's a ball rolling. Yeah, like that's that. why we've done it really. Simple, simple as that. We can we can come up with an idea. We can go right. This is our idea, and then we can do it through the through the company. We have we have sort of taken on a few people mm. who've given us ideas as well, but but they're mostly ours. You know, it's our idea yeah. to do this. Um, you know, I'm doing a, a, a we've taken on um, Bracknell, you know, the online football series of the mm -hmm. comedy sort of manager. I've, you know, we've, we've, we've brought that in house and trying to develop that with them. So we've, you know, we have done 
other stuff, but mostly it's our ideas, yeah. And I think as well, it's, it, it takes out the middleman almost of when, you know, say you've got an idea for X documentary and then you take it to production companies or to BBC or, you know, whoever, you kind of take that little bit out of it, that pressure of trying to sell it to people to fund it or whatever yeah. or, yeah. or produce it, which is, I think is massive, isn't it? Yeah, like, uh, but she, she's, she's very lucky that... Vicky's in a position where she gets obviously gets lots of offers, and of the power of her pulling potential and you know the audience she brings in makes the people and types of broadcasters want to work with her. Yeah. So we're very lucky in that state, you know, in that that, but I in think that department. Your body really. of work speaks for itself as well, mate. It's like in, you know, the yeah, I mean, documentaries. Amazing. You know, I'm very flattered to have sort of carved out a niche in that world. You've done well, and um, and you always get offers. I'm I'm in that position outside where. I kind of want, only want to do what I want to do. So yeah. my missus laughs at me. She's like, anything to do with the minors and Welsh football, he just does it. That's <laughs> just true. It's like I can't help myself, you know. So, But I'm lucky that I'm in that position. I'm 52 now, but I'm in that position where I don't have to do other things. I can do things that I really love. And sometimes, you know, they're not, they're not particularly well paid or anything like that, but I do it because I'm like, I says, you know, it's the Welsh football team. You know, it's... Um, they were my first love as a kid. You know, I, I knew about the Welsh football team before the Welsh rugby team. That was unusual in the valleys, but it was that mid seventies kit, with the yellow yes. and green, that team of 74, 75, 76. I just remember them really well. You know, so that was the first time I sort of registered about, about any sport. So I'm gonna we're gonna keep it on there, sir. Yeah, um, which is natural when speaking to you. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, talk to me a bit about uh, Merthyr Town as it is now, like the football club. And your involvement with that? Yeah, well, I, used, my father and my grandfather and my family have all been big Merthyr Town fans. Merthyr Tidville, they were called after the Second World War. They've been reformed again. The fans have bought them, which I think has been brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I grew up. I just grew up going to the grounds from a young kid, really. My father and my grandfather, and my great grandfather used to go to watch Merthyr and Cardiff. They were the two teams they went to see. So I kind of followed them. It was quite funny, actually, because certainly in the early and mid-80s, I wasn't allowed to go to Cardiff because it was too dangerous when mm -hmm. I was a young kid because it was obviously very lively there. Mm -hmm. So I was allowed to go to Merthyr. And then I got about 14. I think I was my father. said, well, you can go now down to Cardiff. Mm -hmm. So I started going with my mates. Merthyr was always, still is as well, a big Cardiff City area. Yeah. Uh, I remember my, my mate being outraged about 10 years ago because they were selling Swansea shirts in the Tesco's in Merthyr. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was when they were in the Premier League. But um, So, you know, I kind of like grew up always going to watch Merthyr and Cardiff. Um, and I, I've stayed involved. Um, they are a non-league team, but they're really important to the town. They're a great community club. You know, they have lots of uh, sort of initiatives with mental health. Loads of different teams play there because it's a 3G surface, girls teams. You know, they do fantastic things in the town. So I'm a big fan of them and what they do. The volunteer sort of like culture is magnificent. The board mm. there are brilliant. Mark Evans is on the board, obviously very well known for the Welsh FA, been there many years. So good good people, Si. And so I've been very lucky in life that, you know, I've done reasonably well. So I was able to sponsor the shirt and the back of the shirt and BYO. Vicky as well comes in half of me. Amazing really for Nottingham Girl. She's like, no, I want to sponsor as well. She loves the town, loves the people. And this year we also sponsored the ground, but we kept it as Pendallon Park. There's a bit of a story behind that. I was um, I was given doctorate by Swansea University, my old Swan, my old university, which is really funny actually because I got an email from a fella, a Cardiff fan, saying to me, "I can't believe you took a doctorate from Swansea University." I was like, "Mate, that's taking it a bit yeah, far." I know. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the university's not the football there, team. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I, I kind of um, I had that, and when I was being interviewed by Radio Wales, they sort of said to me, "Anything else more you want?" Achieve, and I stupidly said, tongue in cheek, oh, I'd love to I'd love to sort of buy Merthyr eventually mm. and sort of do a wreck. So, and of course, they reported it as if like mm. Johnny wants to be the new Ryan Reynolds. Mm. So, because you can imagine all my mates going, what? I was like, no. <laughs> but then um, a lad who was in primary school with me, Anthony Lewis, who'd moved to Australia, done really well for himself, really bright boy. Um, he'd sold an app to the Australian NHS. He'd seen the article and says, oh, I, I want to put some money into Merthyr. He said, Why don't we both sponsor the ground together? I was like, Okay. So it was a nice end to it, really. We both yeah. sponsored the ground, and um, we called it Pendaran Park. We didn't want, I didn't want yeah. BYO, and he didn't want his company. So, yeah, so it's just, as you get older, you really realise how important football clubs are, sports teams. You know, in Wales, we see it now with um, village teams and rugby clubs. I think they're really important. You know, they become a social hub, and I hate it when pubs and clubs shut. I think that's part of the thing with Dave Eva. I think they're just super important public houses. So, you know, if, if I can help in any small way with that, then I'm happy to do it. Yeah, I think even like 
like football clubs and, and like local clubs at grassroots level, it's so important to to kids and keeping them out of trouble and all this sort of thing. But also they're important as they go up in like the men's teams and you know yeah. the Saturday and the Sunday league teams. Because I think like you mentioned, like mental health, things like that, like that team environment and doing sport and being active is massive. And I think that changing room um, camaraderie, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's nothing like it, nothing like it. And that's for all sports. It's not just for men; it's for, for women as well. In you know, in women's football and, and women's sports, like there's nothing like that changing room camaraderie. And I think it's really important that that grassroots sports yeah. continue. Um, on the other thing, man, I think um, I agree with you. Like that, I've been really impressed. I've been up there a couple of times with my boy. He's played in a couple of tournaments. Um, on the ground yeah and stuff and it's a lovely set up there specifically it's great isn't it? yeah yeah it's just and you always get like a nice feel to it so some clubs which are all name but like sometimes you go there with the kids and, so, and it feels a bit almost like a bit elitist mm. in some in some aspects not all aspects just some aspects but i always find whenever we've been up to mirtha like everyone's really welcoming and it's like, oh, do you know where you're going? Do you know this? Oh, does he know anyone? Stuff like that. And that's massive for a young, like when he was young and you think he went for a trial, you know, he's very young and he was nervous. And just the way they made sure that he was settled and stuff rather than just going, you know, name, if you go. Yeah. And it's like, yes. it's very impersonal, I guess, is the, is the way I put it. But, um, with the Merth football thing, I think it's so important. Like Welsh football as a whole, whether it's Wrexham and Swansea, Cardiff, Newport, Merthyr, they're vital to where Welsh football long term. Obviously, they might not necessarily feed a load of players up into the national team. No. But I think building the sport, like I'm a bit of an outlier because I'm not really interested in rugby. Mm. Um, never have been, like it's always been football for me which is a bit unusual in Wales. However, it, that interest in the sport is what enables Card uh, Wales to fill the Cardiff City Stadium. Yeah. And you see so many kids there, but they're the next generation because there will be a time, unfortunately, where people like me and you and people our age would be too old to go yeah. or not able to go or yeah. maybe yeah. no longer with us and stuff like that. And it's like, I know it's a bit morbid, but like... No, I know what you mean. Yeah, this is the next generation. Next generation through. Getting it's interested. funny because I kind of always want Wales to win in anything. I'm one of those people, you know, tiddly winks, doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But I was just saying, Merth has always been a football town, famously, and the people always talk about this. And it was, all we did was play football. We watched Merth. Of course, like I said, we wanted Wales to win, but it was a football town. And we had this extraordinary period in the sort of late to 80s, early 90s, where we had this team, you know, won everything and won Welsh Cups and went to Europe, beat Atalanta. It was ridiculous really looking back. We were probably the best team in, in, in South Wales at that time, regularly beating Cardiff and Swansea in the Welsh yeah, Cup, yeah. you know. But that was a quirk of the era because Cardiff and Swansea were in the fourth division and you were, it was full of like journeymen, YTS kids, Mercer. It was more lucrative to play football and sort of work part-time. So they had just all these really good... But then, of course, when the money poured into football and then Cardiff in particular really took off, didn't it, in the sort of late 90s, then you had Sam era and stuff like that. So the dynamic changed. And Merthyr struggled a little bit then, you know, in the sense of, you know, Cardiff pulled in a lot of a lot of people to watch them. Merthyr, you know, we're, we're sort of getting seven, eight hundred. But they're back now to getting sort of a thousand plus again. And a lot of people, you know, who feel disillusioned by the modern game. You know, they come, got quite a few hundred of them, people they used to support sort of Cardiff and yeah. other teams who find it's like too expensive, the atmosphere is gone and all that kind of stuff. And they have a pint and, 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 and can watch Murtha. So you're starting to get sort of the pickup from that as well. And there is something very pure about it. I do like non-league. I like going up this side. I like having a beer. I like the friendliness. And you know, the result isn't everything. You know, it's yeah. like, it's, there's, there's, a, there's such a pressure on the modern game, you know. See with City, you know. Obviously, I do work with Forest week, every week. Oh, you know, every game's especially in the Premier League. Once it gets to the mm -hmm. Premier League, like, you know, the money that's to be made and lost, the stakes are so high. Everybody's in a, in a constant state of like, you know, yeah. terrified to do anything. And um, so Murthy hasn't wound up yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's almost unhealthy. You know, it's, it feels like pulling something mm -hmm. that's going to snap. But with Murthy, that's my my joy really of going and just going. Of course, I wanted to win and I wanted to get the playoffs this year and all that, but. I'm just happy that they exist. 
in the town that I can go see my mates and just enjoy. Like like you said, you bang on socialising. I mean, not even playing football, but going to watch a football club yeah. could be like family for you. You know, people who support City and support Merthyr, they are friends for life, you know, and, and the rhythm and routine of them going and the social aspect before and after is super important. And, you know, sometimes forget really that you know, football, although it's in the middle of it, isn't as important sometimes as all those things, you know. Yeah, my yeah, I got I got a friend a friend of mine. He um was a season to get at Cardiff, season to hold at Cardiff from when he was like I think five, all the way through until the rebrand, and he's sort of same age as me, like 42, 43, I think he's a bit older. But but and then when the rebrand came, he just no, that's not for me. Yeah, he's never been back. And he goes to watch. He always follows. Started off just following Cardiff Met. But because it's obviously such a small crowd and I you got to know the players and the club, I think he writes their programme now and he does like a little, I don't know, like a podcast or something before and on the games. Like he's got really involved. And I think um, it's changed his relationship with football completely because I think, I, like you mentioned, you're able to sit and have a beer and, and yeah. watch the game. And if things don't, go your way on that day then mm. everyone kind of shakes hands everyone has a beer together at yeah. the end and yeah. it's just different and I think it's almost like a mix of grassroots you know, with professional sort of football as well yeah and I think I think you're absolutely right more you know, and more people are going that way and they because they're disillusioned well I could there's I, I would say Merth have picked up a few hundred fans who Probably not. I know, but I know quite a few. Who, who the rebound was was too much for them. Mm. I've never seen Cardiff since then, I, and I, I wasn't one of those ones. It was like you know, sort of. I just felt that something had changed because it, it was so. Like the Cardiff, watching Cardiff, it was we were so clannish. We were so close. The support was so good. I just like I just love it. And then after that, it was there was such a it was such a it was such a shame in that there was a fracture in the, in the, in the fan base, and has it ever recovered? Yeah, and, and uh, you know, sort of worn off. There was a period where you know you thought, "Oh, fair play," but you know, it probably means ultimately a change of ownership or something like that would mean that maybe some fans will start going back. But uh, like you're saying, I, I found all that really sad. I was it's never been the same. Never been the same. And and I think the boys and women we lost. It was a shame because I don't think <laughs> I could. It was almost surreal when it first happened. You know, I was couldn't believe it. Since I just couldn't believe it. I thought, this is the wind up to me, and you know, the fact that we were called the Bluebirds, and like I said, my great grandfather went to to the 1927 Cup final, Davy Owen, who was a mm. Merthyr Minor. I was just, I was thinking, you can't change the colour of a club, but you know, we did. Um, and I'm really, you know, pleased that we went back, obviously. Um, but it was just, a, it was just such a strange time. Wasn't it? What, what, what was it like for you? At the time? Oh, it was horrific because like, it was the first year in the Premier League, wasn't it? Yeah. So it was like. You had spent all these years under Dave Jones and, yeah. and coming so close to good side to well. yeah, yeah, and like missing out on goal difference to the playoffs and yeah, things yeah. like this on the last day, and and then to finally get there, and it just felt. I think the way I would describe it, it felt soulless. Like mm -hmm. you were there, you're watching Cardiff in in red, and I think initially I said I'm not going, and then. I think we got to get to the Man City game, which Cardiff won 3-2. Which, don't get me wrong, it was uh, incredible to watch Cardiff in a Premier League beating Man City 3-2, who had not long got the money in themselves. Huge result. Didn't feel didn't feel right for various reasons. And I, and I had not planned to go back again after that. Um, and then the Man United game came around. And um, I got this weird relationship with Manchester United because... As a kid and a teenager, my dad used to watch Manchester United. He was a big fan. So I quite often would be sat on the sofa watching the Champions League games yeah, yeah. on ITV with him. He died when I was 16. And I kind of carried that tradition on. Yeah. Like, so I wouldn't say I support him, but I kind of followed well, they were, him. We were, were talked about this quite a lot. They were all in Cumberland that time. In the mid yeah. to late 90s, pretty much they were always the team left in Europe and everybody kind of watched them. Didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And I think that game came around at the at Cardiff, and I said to Becky, "He said, look, I'm going to go to this one. Yeah. I feel like I kind of almost like I felt like I owed it to my old man. You know, they're finally they're playing each other. It's in Cardiff. I'm going to go. And even that, like, I came out of it, and then it was should have been quite an uh, quite an emotional day, and quite a you know, uh, I don't know what the word is, but." 
but like it should have been quite a quite a day for me personally and it just felt quite empty and I didn't go back I don't think we went back until they went back to blue did they after that so, yeah my I, I, yeah my health was awful at the time as well but yeah. probably did contribute to it but I think, for me that Academy. Yeah, and he had to wear the he had to, he had to wear the red to be a man kit. He was a goalkeeper, luckily, so he didn't wear the red kit. But he right. did. Have, we have got a, an and academy kit with his, and he's got that awful was be a man fire, fire thing. and passion. Or something. Yeah. No, it was it was it, it was right. bad advice. Whatever it was, it was such a weird. Like I said, ask me to describe it. Was such a weird time, and I don't think it's ever recovered. So I think more. more can't family agree with that's never quite been the same. It was such a sliding doors moment, wasn't it, when we didn't beat Blackpool in that bloody playoff? Yeah, when Jay and, got and, injured. Uh, and, and, and you know, they were they, their ownership. I, I've told the Blackpool fans, and we're good lads, they've said we had crap owners as well, you know, we just mm -hmm. took the money out and they plummeted on the leagues. It should have been us, yeah, it should yeah, have been yeah. Sydney. And you think, I think that team and that the way we were and the momentum, I think we'd have had a chance, um, but you know, uh. Hey, one of those, it was a one few of those, wasn't it? Like the FA Cup final. I remember, do you know, with the FA Cup final against Portsmouth, yeah. I remember you did a, a piece did, yeah. for BBC, didn't yeah. you? And um, yeah. I remember that. And uh, it just, just sticks with me, the, the little piece that you did, like I the did, build yeah. up to it. But it was, that's the sort of, those little sort of vignettes and stuff. I've never had to buy that's a pint. I grew up on. I've never had to buy a pint in Cardiff since then. No, I bet not. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best thing I've ever done. But no, I, it, was, it was, I mean, like you said, you you felt that the momentum at that time and the way it was that the club had a real personality. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It was yeah. like there was a, you you kind of knew Cardiff fans knew what they were, and after the colour change, there was kind of like I hated like people in the middle saying, you know, oh, how were the Red Sox doing? You know, mm. Cardiff. And I, was, and I was no defence, no, because 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 they'd gone with it. I couldn't go. Well, that would never happen in Cardiff. Yeah. If I were happening in something like yeah. Millwall, say. I would have thought that would never happen in Cardiff, and it did. So yeah. it just, just goes to show it could happen anywhere, I suppose. Yeah, it's, it's just a weird thing that shouldn't have happened, yeah. did happen. And I think it, like I said, it's never been the same, but also I think it damaged the relationship and the trust between the fans and the club, which I don't think is back today. Like, there is a big element of the fan base that doesn't trust what the club is saying, mm. even now, and I think, that's a problem which they will have to address yeah. at some point. But I don't, I think, like you said, uh, for those people who haven't gone back, they probably won't go back until yeah. the ownership changes. I think, so. I think so. it's probably something like that. It's, it's just a big shame, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, uh, as we wrap up, I, I've got just one or two little questions I'd like to ask you. Of course. What, is there something which you haven't done, mm -hmm. which is not much, <laughs> in fairness? But is there something which you haven't done which you would like to do? Because you've been in a band, yeah. you've made films, you've been a TV presenter, you've been an actor, you've radio. Great question. I don't I don't think that is, if, you know, if I got hit by a thunderbolt tomorrow, you, I'd be all right with you saying he's, he's, lived a, he's lived a decent life, he's, he's very life. happy, yeah. Um, it is probably that Merthyr thing. I mean, if there's one thing I could absolutely wish for, I would love to see Merthyr in the Football League. I think that would be amazing for that part of the valleys and the town is it's a town of 60 odd thousand it's got i think a borough a population of over a hundred thousand from what i understand so it's got the potential um i think it could operate on that sort of level you know it's good, the catchment area the people so you know if i could actually if, if you said to me the one wish for you for you know wherever wherever i go wherever it is we go i would I would love to see most in the football league it'd be really difficult but i'd love to see that happen. We, we, we got really close in the gm Vauxhall conference about um God, when was that in the early 90s and uh, we were a really good team then um but so we've got we obviously you know there's, there's a potential to do it get good support so that would be my my thing so there you go there we go and maybe you'll be the owner at the time <laughs> well do you know <laughs> i wouldn't have be I'd, yeah. never, I, yeah, I'd never be an owner because uh, obviously it's fan owned fan. but the dreams now would be just to sort of if i won the lottery i'd just weigh them in and say right yeah. have yeah. that don't, don't don't blame me if you yeah, yeah, waste it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's that is the most difficult job in football is being an owner. I think I think yeah, yeah, everybody right. everybody thinks they can run a football club better than you, and I, no. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't fancy that. At all. Yeah, that's the same as me. Like if I were like the Euro Millions or something, I'd want to give Cardiff money. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to be involved in spending it. 
No, exactly. Because I don't want to get the blame. I think it all go from. And you can always that's be the exactly guy. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can always be the guy who said, "Well, I, yeah. I put fifty million in, but it's up to them. Yeah. It's up to them. They did with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I know, like, I've been nagging you to come on, yeah. and I appreciate you finding the the time because I know yeah. how busy you are. But I do really appreciate you coming in and oh, you're welcome. chat. It's been pleasure. Um, and we didn't even talk about Katie. She's doing everything. And She's everywhere. doing great. Yeah, Amazing. she's fantastic. It's fantastic. She's one of that new generation. She's absolutely a Wales football fan. Yeah, um, I see her to cricket as well. She's, she's like to cricket. with a hundred cricket. She's there DJing. I sadly lost her to Spurs side, but that was fair enough. She she moved to London when she was eighteen, and and they were really good actually. Then, 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 yeah, well, she she was living in Manor Manor Hill and and around that area, and they, they were really good Spurs because it's really hard to get Arsenal tickets. But she managed to go to see them, and they got her. And I thought fair play to them, you know, pushing. Tickets out into the community, and so so she said, "Look, Dad, I'm just, and it was a few Welsh well players. Obviously, Ben's mm-hmm. been there a long time, but then I remember that season they had Joe there, and they had Bale or went, and so she was like, oh, I think Dad's loads of Welsh mm-hmm. players there.' So she she yeah. supports players. Obviously, she'd say like she she always wants Cardiff and Merthyr to win as well because of me. But um, yeah, she's just she's doing great. She's on radio. She's learning the language. She's on Radio One. Radio she's doing well. She's like wreck on time. I know, yeah. They, but they did say to me like she I've was been trying. For yeah, <laughs> that part of her brain apparently is a part of your brain apparently your language it must be highly developed I certainly didn't get it from me just being mm-hmm. that but she um, she just took to it and she's the, I think the big thing Sai is she wanted, wanted to learn Wells she's dead proud she moved to London when she was young but then she, she was asking me loads of questions about my old man working underground and, and her great grandfathers and, and on her mother's side of all oh, their Welsh speaking mining but, so she was dead proud of this and, yeah, she, yeah. Oh, and, she got, and she got really interested in it when she got to about when she got to her early 20s, she was like, well, where did he work? And what did they do? So, and I think those things motivate people then. They go, I want to learn this language because they understand the history of it a bit more. And yeah. I want to, I want to be this, do this kind of thing. So she's, she's always back before the Cardiff to London, uh, doing stuff down here and recording things. And um, I'm really proud of it. I think it's great. She's doing amazing. Yeah. It's doing, like, everyone in your house is killing it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the, um, I'm, the, I'm third really, the pecking order. I, I always get, when I'm out now, obviously, where's Vicky? Mm-hmm. Are you Katie Owen's dad? Yes. <laughs> and um, if I'm with them both, can I take a selfie? Yeah, can you take a picture with them? Yeah, <laughs> which is great. So this listen, this you know, girl power, all power to women. I'm really proud of them both, you know. Yeah, that's it. And if you're gonna take someone's if you're gonna be someone's photographer or whatever, yeah, my wife and daughter. daughter that'll so, do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um Johnny, it's been a pleasure, mate. Brilliant, brilliant, mate. Thank, Thank you very much, really, really Yeah, really, it. you've done brilliant as well, mate. I mean, considering when I first come on and what it's become, credit to you as well, Yeah, well. well Keep growing and there, just yeah. uh, trying to trying to keep growing. And like I said, I got a few ideas for, mm-hmm. for making different types of content and like documentaries, little ones, and, and some stuff like that. And we'll see how it goes. See how it goes. But uh, keep hopefully. on, keep on, keeping keep on. on. Love that t-shirt yeah. as well. That's yeah. the Ian Brown t-shirt. The Ian Brown t-shirt. <laughs> um, guys, please do subscribe, like all that stuff. Um, I'll drop links and everything to. Johnny's work and socials and all that sort of stuff. But uh, make sure you check all his good stuff out. And I'm sure there'll be a new Welsh documentary out soon. Nice one.